Laser cooling means shining light on stuff and making it cold. Now that in itself sounds like it's completely backwards because after all, you typically think if you shine light on something, it's going to get warm. So how is it even possible to shine light on something and make it cold? To cool the air down means to make those molecules, atoms in the air, move more slowly. That's the difference between hot and cold. So how do you make something cold with a laser? Well, lasers, all light, pushes on stuff. There's a, a thing called radiation pressure. Light pushes on things. What we've figured out to do over the years is how to push on atoms in such a way as to make them slow down. The thing that was perhaps the, the crowning um, uh, achievement of the early days of laser cooling was the discovery that we made in our laboratory that it was possible to get these atoms colder than everyone had thought was the limit to how cold you could get something. The prediction said that we could get down to temperatures of 240 millionths of a degree. In other words, one quarter of one thousandth of a degree above absolute zero. Pretty cold, right? Well, in fact, we got a whole lot colder than that. And that was the big breakthrough discovery that made a whole lot of other things possible. Well, all clocks have tickers. All of these tickers have imperfections. Every quartz crystal is made a little bit differently. Uh, the length of the pendulum can change a little bit, and that changes how fast it will swing back and forth. So all of these clocks have imperfections. And so one has, throughout history, been trying to make these clocks better by making the tickers be more reliable. That is, always have the same ticking frequency. Well, it turns out that atoms are the best choice for making tickers that always tick at the same frequency. Even atoms have their uh, um, uh, imperfections. Temperature means that the atoms are moving with a certain velocity, having a certain kinetic energy. The hotter the gas is, the faster the atoms are moving. It's not so easy to measure the ticking frequency of something that's whizzing around at the speed of sound. And that's the problem that everybody was facing with atomic clocks, was that the atoms were moving at approximately the speed of sound, and it wasn't so easy to measure the ticking frequency. So we said, let's cool them down using lasers so that they're going more slowly, and that'll make it easier to measure the ticking frequency, and you can make better clocks. When I started doing laser cooling, the very best clocks were accurate to a part in 10 to the 13. So that's one part divided by one with 13 zeros after it. That's the fractional error in how good that clock was. Sounds incredible, right? But today, those clocks are uh, a couple in 10 to the 16, almost three orders of magnitude better. And that has been made possible because of laser cooling. I suppose that young children are curious about everything, and very early my curiosity tended toward uh, curiosity about science. My parents got me a microscope when I was very young, maybe six years old, and I remember looking at all kinds of things around the house uh, with this microscope. I remember collecting various household uh, uh, chemicals and fluids uh, to mix together which was my homemade chemistry set. And in addition, I was doing all the other things that kids do, climb trees and uh, 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 scurry up and down uh, uh, cliffs and uh, collect uh, huckleberries in the woods. Uh, but um, uh, there was always a lot of physical activity, and a lot of that physical activity for me involved uh, doing things that, uh, that related to science, looking at stuff, being curious, curious about the natural world.